a reboot of Yu-Gi-Oh, something that people have talked about for years on end, but could it really happen? Let's dive on into it, shall we? Hello, ladies and gentlemen, it is your host on the beautiful day of the most with a time change, Avril R32 here, and destroy the ever-living boo-boo stain off that like and subscribe button as we climb even higher, the 1500 ladder. I feel like I'm out of shape doing my intro here, ladies and gentlemen, on this very hot summer. Actually, feels like summer. It's actually kind of fall. I feel like I'm out of practice. I've been gone for a few days. Family members doing much better if you saw my uh, community post. But I want to talk about something that I've seen popping up in the community as of late, and that is a reboot of Yu-Gi-Oh! Something that I've heard a lot of people uh, talk about in the past, and I really don't feel like that this is something that we could ever see happen, and I want to explain why. For the past 25 years, Yu-Gi-Oh! has built up this nostalgia factor. You know, when you think of Yu-Gi-Oh!, especially if you're my age, late 20s, even if you're like, I would say, somewhat early teens, you probably got started on the original Yu-Gi-Oh! in some form or fashion. I've met some players who they got started into the game because of Yu-Gi-Oh! 5Ds, even because of Yu-Gi-Oh! Zexal. But hardly, if ever, have people ever said, yes, I got into Yu-Gi-Oh! because of Arc V, or because of Reigns, or because of the Go Rush anime, whatever, in Japan. It's usually been because of that nostalgia factor with Yu-Gi! Kaiba, Dark Magician, Duelist Kingdom, Battle City, the Egyptian Gods, the whole shebang, right? And so, if you were to reboot Yu-Gi-Oh, let's just call it Yu-Gi-Oh 2, as everybody seems to call it, or what I think it would probably be called if Konami did this, be like Yu-Gi-Oh Masterclass or something like that, right? Which I think has a nice ring to it. But if they were to reboot the game, even if they started with like those old nostalgia characters, it wouldn't really change much. And because you would still have the nostalgia of the old characters, but you'd basically be rehashing the same story if you rebooted it and then just told the same story with the same characters. And on top of that, you really wouldn't be able to change much with the card game because eventually power creep would still happen. And I think that this is the thing that a lot of people want when they talk about rebooting the game or having like a Yu-Gi-Oh 2, is that at the end of the day, a lot of players, myself included on some days, want the game to go back to a much more simpler time. Watching heroes combo off, even though they are a combo deck, is insane. Watching Snake Eyes as Amina combo off is insane. The Fiendsmith combos are broken. Ubel combos are nuts. Even Ryzal, even though it's a mid-range deck and Tempai by extension, which is also a mid-range deck, these decks are doing leaps and bounds more than what decks even back in like 2013 were doing. And so when people say, I want a reboot of the game, I feel like what they're really talking about is that they want a return to simplicity. And the thing is, is that if Konami were to just reboot the game entirely, I feel like that would do more harm than good because the one of the main appeals of Yu-Gi-Oh! isn't just the fact that it's been around for 25 years, but it's because of the fact it's been around for 25 years with this giant card pool. You can still take cards that are legal at three or one, whatever, today, that came out back in 2004 and still play them in your deck. Are those cards going to necessarily be good? Maybe not. But if they haven't received any kind of errata and those cards are still the same, you can play those same cards in 2024. You know, that's where a lot of the creativity of a lot of decks come into play. Look at Jesse Cotton's Crystal Beast Snake Eyes deck. Now, yes, he's using some of the new support that came out in the structure deck, but he's still using old cards that came out in what is arguably the worst Yu-Gi-Oh set of all time, Tactical Evolution, where we got Rainbow Dragon, we got the Crystal Beast Monsters, Sapphire Pegasus, the whole thing. Now, obviously, Crystal Beast, again, they got that newer support to make them more playable, but it's the fact that what if we had set rotation in the game where a certain set on back, you can't use those cards. And what if Konami made the Crystal Beast structure deck to push out new Crystal Beast cards, but because of set rotation, you couldn't use the old ones. Like you couldn't use Sapphire, Pegasus, Ruby, Carbuncle, all of that. Then you lose access to that type of deck creativity. And so to have a reboot of the game, yes, if you returned it to a much more simpler time where you would summon a monster, maybe set two cards face down and end your turn, eventually that game too is going to evolve. You know, 
this is why I've asked the question in the past of, would you still be playing Yu-Gi-Oh! today if the game was still the same as 2005 or still the same as Edison in 2010? And I'm sure that there's a lot of people out there who would say, yes, absolutely. But eventually the game would have died off a long time ago. The reason why it's still around is because people like overall how the game has evolved. There are new players that are somewhat constantly coming into the game. Is Yu-Gi-Oh gonna live forever? No, it will eventually die off, whether it's in another five years or another 25 years from now, where they're celebrating the 50th anniversary for five years straight. And so, no matter what you do to the game, unless you throw set rotation into the rules of the game to where you can no longer use cards from Legend of Blue Eyes or can no longer use cards from Duelist Alliance, whatever the case may be, you're always going to have this power creep. Now, ways that you can help the issue of power creep is that whenever you print these core sets or even side sets, you don't put all of these overpowered charming esque baby back bullshit cards in the set to where those cards are instantly $150 out of the gate and you just end up outpricing so many people out of whatever deck they want to play or out of the format as a whole. Fualoses are still $125 right now, as I checked this morning, and that is absolutely insane because when you have a power, not even a power creep card, but a powerful card in the form of Fualos, whatever deck you build, you have to include three Fualos. So you are instantly like four to $500 roughly it knee deep in debt into this deck that you want to build. Even if you want to play something like Arcana Force that's getting new support out of Supreme Darkness, you got to play Fualos because it's just that good. Even if you don't play any other hand traps because the card is just that good. And so rebooting the game, you may make the card pool much smaller if you were to start back from square one, but you're essentially just nuking the card pool and just starting from scratch. And in another 10 to 15 years, it's gonna be the same thing if that new Yu-Gi-Oh 2 reboot even survives that long. I don't feel that the issues with the game revolve around needing a Yu-Gi-Oh reboot. I feel like that the issues of the game overall involve one, Konami not listening to the community, which uh, with their other IPs, I've noticed they've pretty much done the same thing. The issues, of course, also revolve around price support. Getting a fucking picture frame from Michaels or Hobby Lobby that you can put cards in if you top or win a YCS is not good price support. You threw in a Steam Deck, cool. Golf clap, that's not really anything. Uh, you have a vanilla monster prize card that I'm sort of on the fence about. Like I get that you don't want a broken card like Minerva, but then at the same time to have a vanilla card like another verse plutonium or whatever it is is also not the best thing either um that's really where the game stands at this point the product is a whole another monster of its own i i, I think that we're really not going to see any kind of changes i think that what we've seen in quarter century bonanza which this is the point that i want to end on is really really good i mentioned that in my last couple of community posts and i was going to make a dedicated video to it but i figured i would just mix it in this Having reprint sets like Quarter Century Bonanza are honestly perfect sets because you have good reprints like Little Knight, Bonfire, Wanted, Black Witch, Promethean, Thrust, and then you've also got the nostalgia pool of Swap Frog, uh, the Monarchs, the God Cards. You've got those things. That is a perfect uh, Bonanza, pun intended, of both old school cards and new school cards. And I think if Konami keeps tapping into the retro nostalgia bone that everybody has because even i'm nostalgic at times i've talked about that that's really where their other money pool is going to come from rebooting the game or even bringing rush dual stuff over here to the tcg i just don't think it would last and i think that if konami keeps tapping into that nostalgia pool and supporting that especially for the old school players like me who do enjoy nostalgia formats from time to time that's really cool and i think that if they can keep reprinting out really high priced cards and keeping the price low then that's going to make it all the more better that when they print a high price card, at least we know, okay, we're going to get a couple reprints, ideally seven to eight months. Of course, everybody would want sooner, but the players want to know that their investment is safe. Within six to eight months, we know we're going to get some kind of reprint, ideally make it easy to get. But guys, let me know what you think about this. Let me know, would you want to see Yu-Gi-Oh! be rebooted? I really wouldn't. You know, I've been taking a break from the game because I just don't have any events to go to right now. 
and I'm, I'm very happy with Quarter Century Bonanza though. I'm really happy with the reprints that they put in there. So guys, thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next video.